The night of the accident replayed in my mind like a haunting melody. The bridge, once a mundane part of my daily commute, became the stage for tragedy. Metal against metal, screams swallowed by the roar of destruction, I emerged from the wreckage, battered and bruised, my heart shattered by the loss of lives, including my unborn child. The hospital's sterile walls echoed the doctor's prognosis, extensive damage, a fragile thread holding on to life. As I lay in that cold, unforgiving bed, the weight of his words settled like a heavy stone. You may never be able to have children, he said, the finality in his tone cutting through the hushed atmosphere. In the days that followed, grief and pain became my constant companions. The nursery I had joyfully decorated now stood as a silent testament to shattered dreams. The laughter of a child, once vivid in my imagination, now felt like a distant echo fading into the darkness. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a melancholic glow across the hospital room, my husband, Thomas, entered his eyes mirroring the pain etched on my face. Emma, he whispered, taking a seat beside the bed, we'll get through this. We have each other. I turned to him, the weight of loss heavy in my gaze. Thomas, our child is gone. How do we ever recover from this? He reached for my hand, his touch offering solace. We take one step at a time, Emma. We heal together. Little did we know that those words were just the prelude to a symphony of challenges that awaited us. The accident had not only claimed our child but had set in motion a series of events that would test the very foundations of our love and resilience. In the aftermath of the accident, Thomas and I clung to each other as if we were anchors in a stormy sea. The nursery, once filled with the promise of a child's laughter, now echoed with an unsettling silence. The doctor's words lingered, casting a long shadow over our hopes for a family. As the days turned into months, Thomas threw himself into his small furniture business. The war of saws and the scent of freshly cut wood became the backdrop to our life. The financial strain of medical bills and the burden of grief left little room for dreams of a brighter future. One evening, as Thomas worked late in his workshop, the weight of our struggles pressed upon me. I stood in the doorway, watching him labor over a piece of furniture with a determination that mirrored the resilience we had both adopted. Thomas, I began tentatively, maybe I could go back to school, get a job. Ease the burden on us. He paused, setting down his tools, and turned to face me. The weariness in his eyes reflected my own struggles. Emma, we're in this together. I don't want you to sacrifice your dreams for me. But, Thomas, we need stability. We need a plan for the future, I pleaded. He approached me, his gaze filled with a mixture of love and concern. Emma, my dream is for us to be together, no matter what. We'll find a way. We always do. And so, I made the choice to put my education on hold, to shelf the career aspirations I had once held dear. The small furniture business became the focal point of our lives, a beacon in the storm of uncertainty. Friends and family questioned my decision, wondering why I would give up so much for a business with uncertain returns. One evening, over dinner, my friend Sarah voiced her concerns. Emma, you had so much potential. Why sacrifice it all for Thomas and his business? I sighed, my gaze drifting to Thomas who sat across from me. It's not just about the business, Sarah. It's about us. It's about weathering the storm together. As time passed, the business faced its share of challenges. Yet, in those moments of struggle, our bond deepened. Our love became the foundation upon which we built our lives, the sacrifices forging a connection that even the strongest storms couldn't shake. Little did I know that the true test of our love lay just around the corner, waiting to unravel the threads we had woven so carefully. The small inheritance left by my father arrived like a whisper of possibility in the midst of our struggles. Hidden in the recesses of his financial legacy was a chance for financial independence, 
a key to unlocking a future beyond the confines of our current challenges. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of orange and pink across our modest living room, I hesitated at the threshold of unveiling the secret nestled within the letter from my father's lawyer. Thomas, I began, my voice tinged with nervous anticipation, there's something I need to tell you. He looked up from the worn-out ledger, the lines on his forehead deepening. What is it, Emma? Taking a deep breath, I handed him the letter, its contents a revelation that could alter the course of our lives. As he read the words meticulously penned by the lawyer, the room seemed to hold its breath, waiting for his reaction. Silence hung in the air until he looked up, his eyes reflecting a mixture of surprise and disappointment. An inheritance. Emma, why didn't you tell me about this before? I wanted to be sure, Thomas. And now, I want us to discuss what this means for our future, I replied, my voice steady. He set the letter aside, his expression conflicted. Financial independence is a tempting offer, Emma, but it doesn't replace what we've been working towards, the family we dreamed of having. Tension filled the room as we grappled with the different desires pulling us in opposite directions. The revelation of the inheritance had become a double-edged sword, a symbol of both liberation and discord. A few days later, after the initial shock had settled, we sat down to discuss our diverging paths. The weight of our unspoken desires hung in the air. Thomas, I need to explore what this inheritance can offer. It's not just about money it's about finding a piece of myself that I lost along the way, I confessed, my eyes meeting his with a mixture of determination and vulnerability. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. Emma, I thought we were building our dreams together. This feels like you're stepping away from our shared vision. I don't want to step away, Thomas. I want us to find a compromise, a way for both of us to be fulfilled, I urged, hoping that our love could withstand the fractures threatening to surface. As we navigated the complexities of our desires and dreams, the room echoed with the weight of decisions yet to be made. The inheritance, once a beacon of hope, had become a catalyst for self-discovery and a crossroads in our journey together. The air in our home felt heavy with unspoken tension as I grappled with the newfound independence the inheritance offered. Thomas, once my anchor, seemed like a distant figure in the background. The specter of betrayal lingered, yet I remained oblivious to the storm about to erupt. One fateful afternoon, as I went through the motions of my daily routine, a gnawing suspicion crept into my consciousness. A hunch led me to set up a hidden camera in the corner of our living room, a silent witness to the truth I was not prepared to face. Days turned into nights as I waited, the weight of impending revelation settling like an anchor in my chest. And then, the truth unraveled before my eyes. Late at night, when darkness embraced the world, I sat alone in our dimly lit living room, watching the footage with a mix of trepidation and dread. The screen flickered to life, exposing a betrayal that shattered the fragile trust one had clung to. There, in the grainy footage, Thomas appeared, his actions a stark contrast to the vows we had exchanged. His laughter mingled with hers, the intimacy unfolding like a cruel tableau. The realization hit me like a tidal wave, washing away the illusions I had woven around our marriage. The next morning, the weight of the truth pressed upon me as I confronted Thomas with the evidence. He walked into the room, oblivious to the storm that awaited him. Thomas, I said, my voice carrying a mix of sorrow and accusation, we need to talk. He looked at me, his eyes searching for a clue about the turmoil within. Emma, what's wrong? I played the footage, the air thickening with the silence of betrayal. The room became a witness to a confrontation neither of us was prepared for. The shock on Thomas's face was fleeting, replaced by a strained attempt at denial. Emma, I can explain. It's not what it looks like. The words hung in the air, a desperate plea for understanding. Yet, the evidence spoke louder than any excuse he could muster. How could you, Thomas? After everything we've been through, 
I demanded, my voice a mix of anguish and anger. He hesitated, his gaze avoiding mine. Emma, it's complicated. I never meant to hurt you. The room echoed with the weight of his confession, the shattered fragments of trust littering the floor. The betrayal unveiled marked the end of a chapter, leaving behind a hollow space where love once thrived. The storm had arrived, tearing through the fabric of our shared history, leaving nothing but the debris of broken promises. The echoes of betrayal lingered in the shattered remnants of our home. The evidence, once concealed, now lay bare, a silent witness to the unraveling of our marriage. In the aftermath, I found myself adrift, caught between the pain of the past and the uncertain terrain of my future. In the days that followed, I sought refuge in the guidance of William, a healer whose gentle demeanor offered solace. His small cottage nestled on the outskirts of town became a sanctuary, a place where I could begin the journey of healing. Emma, William said, his voice a soothing balm, the path to redemption starts with forgiveness. Not for him, but for yourself. His words resonated within me, igniting a flicker of strength. The decision to leave Thomas and reclaim my life became clear, and I began the process of untangling the threads that bound me to a broken past. As I prepared to initiate the painful conversation with Thomas, William offered guidance. Face the truth with courage, Emma. It's the first step toward rebuilding your life. The confrontation was inevitable. One evening, in the cold remnants of our once shared home, I summoned the courage to speak the words that had long been held captive within me. Thomas, I began, my voice steady, we can't go on like this. The betrayal has severed something fundamental between us. He looked at me, a mix of regret and desperation in his eyes. Emma, please. I made a mistake. Let me make amends. But the wounds ran deep, and forgiveness felt like an elusive mirage. Thomas, this is not just about a mistake. It's about a breach of trust, a violation of the very foundation of our marriage. As I initiated the process of divorce, the support from friends became a lifeline. Sarah, who had once questioned my sacrifices, offered a listening ear. Emma, you're doing the right thing. You deserve a chance at happiness, she affirmed, her words echoing the encouragement I needed. In the midst of the emotional upheaval, William became a steady presence. Healing is a journey, Emma. Take one step at a time, and in time, the pain will ease. As the divorce proceedings unfolded, I delved into herbalism, finding solace in the gentle rhythms of nature. The weight of the past began to lift as I embraced a newfound freedom, each herb and potion becoming a symbol of my resilience. One evening, as I brewed a healing concoction in William's cottage, he looked at me with a knowing smile. You're on the path to redemption, Emma. The wounds will heal, and you'll emerge stronger. With the divorce finalized, the once shared space now felt like a distant memory. The walls of our home, witnesses to both joy and betrayal, echoed with a newfound emptiness. Yet, as I navigated the uncharted waters of singlehood, a sense of liberation began to unfurl its wings. The inheritance from my father, once a source of conflict, became the foundation of my newfound independence. The small cottage that had been his sanctuary became mine, a refuge where I could redefine myself and rediscover the pieces of my identity that had been lost. One day, as I settled into the quiet routine of my new life, a letter arrived from Thomas. The weight of its presence bore down on me as I hesitated to open it. His words, an attempt at reconciliation, begged for understanding and forgiveness. Emma, the letter began, I know I've hurt you deeply, and I can't change the past but I want you to know that I'm working on myself. I hope one day you can find it in your heart to forgive me." His words, a blend of remorse and hope, left me conflicted. Yet, as I reflected on the journey of healing, forgiveness felt like a distant destination, one that required time and distance. In the process of reclaiming my life, I delved into herbalism with renewed vigor. 
The small garden behind the cottage became a canvas where I painted my dreams of a vibrant and self-sufficient future. One evening, as I tended to the herbs, a neighbor named Margaret approached with a warm smile. Emma, it's inspiring to see you embrace your passions. You're a beacon of strength for many. Her words resonated, offering a sense of validation for the choices I had made. Thank you, Margaret. Liberation comes in many forms, and I'm discovering mine, I replied, a newfound confidence threading through my words. As the seasons changed, so did I. The small furniture business that once held the weight of our shared struggles became a distant chapter. With the inheritance as my guide, I embarked on a journey to create a life shaped by my own aspirations. One day, while exploring the local market, I stumbled upon a quaint herbal store. The proprietor, an elderly woman named Eleanor, shared stories of her own journey into herbalism. My dear, life has a way of leading us to our true calling. Embrace it, and you'll find liberation. Her wisdom became a guiding light as I immersed myself in the world of herbs, concoctions, and the healing power of nature. Liberation, it seemed, was not just about physical independence but a reclamation of the spirit. As I stood in the garden, surrounded by the fragrant herbs, I felt the tendrils of liberation weaving through my soul. The journey was far from over, but with each passing day, the shackles of the past loosened, and the promise of a new, self-defined future beckoned. In the gentle embrace of my newfound liberation, life unfolded in unexpected ways. The quietude of the cottage became a sanctuary, and the healing herbs I cultivated mirrored my own journey of rejuvenation. Little did I know that the next chapter in my life would arrive in the form of two tiny miracles. One breezy afternoon, a knock echoed through the cottage, and when I opened the door, I found myself face to face with a social worker named Karen. Her eyes held a mix of empathy and concern as she explained the circumstances that had led her to my doorstep. Emma, she began, we have newborn twins in need of a loving home. Their mother, overwhelmed and unable to care for them, has asked for your assistance. The weight of the decision pressed upon me, and as I peered into the innocent faces of the infants cradled in Karen's arms, a profound sense of responsibility and opportunity bloomed within. I didn't anticipate this, Karen, but I can't turn away from their need. I'll do my best to provide a loving home, I replied, the weight of the decision settling with a mix of trepidation and anticipation. The twins, a boy and a girl, entered my life like a burst of sunshine after a storm. I named them Oliver and Sophia, and their laughter filled the once silent rooms of the cottage. As I navigated the challenges of single motherhood, the twins became the focal point of my existence. Sleepless nights and endless feedings forged a bond that transcended blood ties. The cottage, once a haven of solitude, transformed into a vibrant home echoing with the joy of children. One evening, as I cradled Sophia in my arms and Oliver played with his toys on the floor, a sense of gratitude washed over me. Margaret, my neighbor, entered the cottage, her eyes sparkling with warmth. Emma, it's heartwarming to see you embrace motherhood so wholeheartedly. The twins are lucky to have you, Margaret remarked, her words weaving a tapestry of affirmation around me. With the twins, each day unfolded like a page in a storybook. Their laughter became the melody of my existence, a stark contrast to the silent grief that had once inhabited these walls. Yet, challenges persisted. Late-night feedings and the demands of parenthood took their toll. During a visit to the local market, Carol, a friend from my past, crossed my path. Emma, I heard about the twins. You've taken on so much. Are you managing okay? Carol asked, her concern evident. I smiled, the weariness in my eyes reflecting the reality of my journey. It's not easy, but love has a way of making even the toughest moments worthwhile. As I embraced the complexities of parenting, the twins became my source of strength. The bond we shared, born out of unforeseen circumstances, deepened with each passing day. 
In the quiet moments of the night, as I rocked Sophia to sleep and Oliver nestled beside us, I marveled at the twists and turns life had taken. The twins, once a surprise, had become the unexpected treasures that filled the void left by the past. The tranquility of my life with the twins was abruptly shattered and a wave of unforeseen events unfolded. One evening, as the golden hues of the sunset painted the sky, a knock on the door sent a shiver down my spine. I opened it to find two police officers standing on the threshold. Emma, one of them began solemnly, we're here to inform you that Thomas has been arrested. He's facing charges of tax evasion and fraud. The news landed like a heavy blow, threatening to unravel the delicate balance I had painstakingly built. The man I had once shared dreams with was now behind bars, his actions casting a long shadow over our shared history. As the reality of the situation sank in, I felt a mix of emotions, betrayal, sadness, and a strange sense of closure. The officers explained that Thomas's arrest was the culmination of an investigation into financial misconduct related to the furniture business. What does this mean for us? I asked, my voice carrying a tremor of uncertainty. You're not implicated in any wrongdoing, Emma. But there might be legal proceedings and inquiries, the other officer replied, his gaze sympathetic. In the following days, I grappled with the fallout of Thomas's actions. The once sturdy foundation of our shared business and dreams now crumbled under the weight of deceit. The news reached friends and neighbors, adding an extra layer of complexity to the web of emotions I navigated. Margaret, my neighbor and confidant, visited with a mix of concern and curiosity. Emma, how are you holding up? This must be overwhelming. I sighed, the weight of the situation evident in my eyes. Margaret, I never expected this. The twins and I are trying to find our footing amidst the chaos. As Thomas faced the consequences of his actions, the reality of single parenthood took on a new dimension. Legal matters and financial inquiries became an unwelcome companion to the already demanding challenges of raising the twins. One day, as I wrestled with paperwork and legal consultations, William, the healer, paid an unexpected visit. Emma, life has a way of testing our strength. You've faced storms before, and you'll weather this one too. His words, though comforting, couldn't shield me from the public scrutiny that accompanied Thomas's arrest. Carol, my friend from the past, approached me cautiously during a visit to the market. Emma, I heard about Thomas. Are you okay? She inquired, her eyes filled with a mix of sympathy and curiosity. I nodded, appreciating the genuine concern in her voice. It's a challenging time, Carol. But we'll get through it. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the cottage, once a refuge, became a hub of activity, consultations with lawyers, inquiries from authorities, and the weight of public opinion pressing down on my shoulders. As the storm of legal proceedings and public scrutiny raged on, the twins and I sought solace within the walls of our cottage. The arrest of Thomas had cast a long shadow, and I found myself navigating the complexities of single parenthood with a determination fueled by a mother's love. Days turned into nights, marked by the relentless demands of legal consultations and inquiries. Amidst the chaos, the twins, Oliver and Sophia, became my pillars of strength. Their laughter, innocent and untainted, resonated like a melody, offering a refuge from the tempest that raged outside our small haven. One evening, as I tucked them into bed, Oliver looked up at me with wide eyes. Mom, why is Daddy not here? The question hung in the air, laden with a complexity that a child's mind could not fully comprehend. Sophia, cradled in my arms, mirrored her brother's curiosity. I sat on the edge of the bed, gathering my thoughts. Sweethearts, sometimes grown-ups make mistakes, and they have to face the consequences of their actions. But you have Mommy, and I promise to always be here for you. Their innocent nods reassured me that, despite the storms outside, the love within our family remained steadfast. 
As the legal proceedings intensified, Margaret, my supportive neighbor, became a steady presence. One afternoon, she entered the cottage with a basket of freshly baked goods. Emma, I know it's tough, but remember, the love you give those children is more powerful than any storm, Margaret offered, her eyes reflecting the empathy of a friend who had weathered her share of challenges. I appreciate your support, Margaret. It means the world to us, I replied, the weight of gratitude settling in my heart. In the midst of legal battles, William, the healer, continued to offer guidance. Emma, a mother's love is a formidable force. It can endure even the darkest nights. Trust in the strength that resides within you. His words resonated, prompting me to draw strength from the unwavering love that bound our small family together. One day, during a visit to the local market, Carol approached me with a compassionate expression. Emma, I can't imagine how difficult this must be for you. If you ever need someone to talk to. Her genuine offer of support warmed my heart. Thank you, Carol. Knowing I have friends like you makes this journey a bit more bearable. As the legal storm raged on, I found solace in the simple moments, reading bedtime stories, baking cookies, and creating a cocoon of love that shielded the twins from the tumultuous outside world. As the legal turmoil surrounding Thomas's arrest gradually subsided, the cottage embraced a newfound tranquility. The twins, Oliver and Sophia, continued to thrive under the canopy of love that had become the defining force of our lives. In the quiet moments, I found myself reflecting on the transformative journey that had brought us to this point. One serene evening, William, the healer, visited the cottage. His eyes held a wisdom that transcended words. Emma, life has a way of completing its cycles. You've weathered storms and emerged stronger. Now, it's time for the chapter of Full Circle. His words stirred a sense of anticipation within me. The notion of Full Circle echoed with the promise of closure and new beginnings. Margaret, my steadfast neighbor, joined us for tea. Emma, the way you've handled everything is inspiring. Your strength has brought you full circle, and I have no doubt that brighter days await. I smiled, grateful for her words of encouragement. Margaret, your friendship has been a beacon of light in our darkest moments. I couldn't have done it without you. In the aftermath of Thomas's arrest, the legal proceedings had reached a resolution. The financial inquiries had ceased, and the once pervasive cloud of uncertainty began to lift. The twins, now toddlers, filled the cottage with laughter and the pitter-patter of tiny feet. During a visit to the market, Carol, my friend from the past, approached with a hopeful smile. Emma, I heard about the resolution. I'm so glad things are getting better for you. I nodded, a sense of gratitude welling within me. Thank you, Carol. It's been a challenging journey, but we're finding our way. As the days turned into weeks, the cottage became a canvas for new beginnings. With the legal chapter closed, I immersed myself in the world of herbalism, expanding the small garden into a flourishing haven of healing plants. One day, as I tended to the herbs, a letter arrived. Its contents revealed that Thomas, having served his time, would soon be released. The news stirred a mixture of emotions, and I grappled with the impending encounter. William, sensing my inner turmoil, offered his insight. Emma, forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting, but it liberates you from the chains of resentment. Consider it as a final step in this circle of healing. The anticipated day arrived, and as Thomas stood on the threshold of the cottage, the atmosphere was charged with a blend of tension and resolution. Oliver and Sophia, now aware of their father's presence, observed the scene with curious eyes. Emma, Thomas began, his voice tinged with remorse, I know I've caused you pain. I don't expect forgiveness, but I want you to know that I've changed. I looked at him, the wounds of the past still visible, but softened by the passage of time. Thomas, our paths have diverged, and forgiveness is a journey I must undertake for my own peace. 
let's ensure the twins have a stable environment moving forward.